Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we will learn how to make a vegetarian lasagna filled with ricotta and spinach. I will be showing you how to make a chunky tomato sauce or better known as classic Napolitan sauce and a delicious ricotta and spinach filling. The first step for our lasagna will be making the classic Napolitan sauce. I will suggest you to start with the sauce because it will take longer to cook and during the cooking time we will be preparing the filling for the lasagna. The difference between this sauce and the pomodoro sauce I did on my previous video is that this is chunky and thicker. This will help us give an amazing texture and will make it hold better. So let's start by adding some olive oil to a small pot preheated on medium to high heat. Add our minced cloth of garlic and our brunoise onions. Sweat for a few minutes till our vegetables have softened up or become translucent. Add two cans of plum or crushed tomatoes and fill half a can with water rinsing all that delicious flavor out. Season with salt and fresh ground black pepper and grab your wooden spoon or rubber spatula so you don't scratch your pot and stir everything together. I am like a grandma, I love my wooden spoon. Use your spoon to crush the tomatoes so they can release all those flavors. Once it has come to a boil, add your teaspoon of dried oregano. Usually we add dry herbs in the middle of the cooking so they hydrate and release their flavors. Fresh herbs add till the end so they keep their vibrant color and aroma. Lower your temperature to medium heat so it can start simmering and reducing. Now it's time to move to our lasagna filling. For this I'll be using 500 grams of classic Italian ricotta cheese. This is a traditional fresh cow milk cheese made in Italy. It's very creamy and freaking delicious. Avoid sticking your fig- <clears throat> Okay, ignore what I just did. We can pretend no one saw this, don't tell my wife. This is a secret between you and me. I will be using frozen spinach, but you can also use fresh if you wish. I choose frozen because when defrost, it's easier to remove the moisture, avoiding this extra water to make my lasagna soggy. Let's start to strangle the hell out of our frozen spinach and wishing a peaceful life to the water. Once we're done, leave it on the side. Yeah, it's time to cook. Add olive oil to a preheated sauteing pan. Add your garlic and onion. Sweat your vegetables till they are translucent. I know this sounds repetitive, but all the good things start with garlic and onion, believe me. Well, not all of them, but most of them. Add your choking spinach and mix all the ingredients together. Season your mixture with salt and fresh ground black pepper. Turn the heat off and add your ricotta cheese. The temperature of the spinach will help the cheese melt and make it easier to mix. Add a pinch of grated nutmeg and transfer it to a bowl. Grab your cheese grater and start grating in the small holes half a stick of parmesan cheese. This will help the cheese melt easier when we are baking the lasagna. Probably this will be enough for our lasagna. Nah, who am I lying to? Let's grate the rest. More cheese equals more love, everybody knows that. Transfer everything to a bowl and don't throw the end of the cheese. This is amazing to use when you're cooking soups. This will give the soup extra cheesy flavor, but don't forget to take it out before serving the soup. Not very good to chew on, it's just to give flavor, but well, anyway. So let's jump back to our bowl and add half of the grated parmesan to our ricotta and spinach mixture. Combine all the ingredients until we form a delicious mass of pure love. Make sure you taste the mixture to see if it needs more seasoning. It's very important we give it a good taste before we build our lasagna because this will make a big difference in making it tasty and delicious. And not ending with something bland, boring and sad. In my case, I will add a bit more black pepper and salt and mix everything before I make the last quality check. Since we are done with our green and white mass of love, it's coffee time! Sorry guys, I needed some quick break before we jump back to check our sauce. As you can see, it has reduced by half. 
Grab your wooden spoon and crush the remaining big pieces of tomato to the side of the pot and check for seasoning. I will add a pinch of baking soda to balance the acidity of the tomato. Let it simmer for a minute. Now we're ready to build our baby. I will be using a 28 per 20 cm baking dish for my lasagna. Lay a few scoops of sauce in the bottom of the baking dish to avoid the pasta from sticking and burning. If you don't do this, you will end up using a hammer and a chisel to remove the burnt pasta. So please, just do it. Then add one layer of pasta and cover it with some more tomato sauce. The moisture of the sauce will help us cook the pasta. If your sauce is too dry, add just a bit more of water to avoid having raw pasta and blaming me for your cracked teeth. But if you prefer to pre-cook your pasta, you can do that as well. I will leave that to you guys. Now add a good amount of ricotta and spinach filling using a spoon to spread everything evenly and sprinkle some grated mozzarella and parmesan cheese. Then press everything with the help of your new pasta sheet and repeat all the previous steps till we finish with all our spinach and ricotta filling. Cover everything with the remaining salsa napolitana and cover every single piece of sauce with cheese. If it's necessary going to the shop and buying extra cheese to cover this, do it because you won't regret it. You can never have enough cheese. Cover your lasagna with aluminum foil and bake it in a preheated oven at 180 Celsius for 30 minutes. Then remove the aluminum foil and turn your oven to maximum. And then bake it till the cheese becomes golden brown. Ladies and gentlemen, there you are. Just look at it. Before smashing your face into that square dish of melted cheese, just give it a minute to chill. Take your time to appreciate the beauty that you just created, because now it's time for your Instagram picture, we want to see. This dish can easily fit 6 to 8 people, or 2 Fabios. <laughs> Let's cut a piece and see all those amazing layers of deliciousness and beautiful colors. Let me know what are your thoughts, or let me know what would you like me to cook in my next videos in the comments below. If you're interested in the recipe, you can find the link from our website in the description below. If you cook this dish or any of my dishes, don't forget to tag me in your posts. We would love to see your pictures. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.